Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're here for the very first time, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah, and on this channel, I post a lot of content about anti-MLM. If this is the first video of mine that you're seeing and you have no idea how you got here, MLM stands for multi-level marketing. This is, in my opinion, a really dangerous and predatory business model that I caution people against getting involved with. If you're really into anti-MLM content, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, sticking around. I upload new videos every week, and I add them all to this big anti-MLM playlist. There's over 100 50 videos on there at this time. Actually, there might be 160. Hold on. <laughs> Literally every week, this playlist gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I have to keep updating the number that I say. Ah, okay. This is going to be the 159th video in the playlist. So we're not 160 yet, but next week we will be. <laughs> and you can find that playlist linked at the beginning of all of my videos, as well as in the description box of all of my videos. I've been told that it's very bingeable. And for today's video, as I'm sure you saw from the title, we have another MLM top fails. This is a compilation style video where I take TikToks or reels or Instagram stories or posts. These are all things that viewers have seen MLM reps post on social media. They send them to me. I feature them here in a video. We watch them together, react to them together, and I offer my commentary. And a lot of times we debunk the claims that they're saying. And this is just a reminder that I do rely on viewers to send me the content for these videos. So if you come across something that is just egregious and heinous on social media, and you're like, we need to talk about this. This needs to be in a video. The instructions for how to send content for me for top fails is in the description box below. That's all the intro stuff. I'll stop blabbing on about that. Let's get into these top fails today. First up is a reel that was posted by a Young Living rep and it really doesn't need much explanation up front. It's really problematic and you'll see exactly why. So I'm on my way to Stacy's funeral. It's a sad day. As a grieving mom watching my friend go through burying their child and the family and everything that goes with it. It makes all my trauma raw and new, but it really just hurts. It just isn't the way it's supposed to be. So I thought I would stop in and tell you that I use Young Living every day. It's an investment that I make in myself because I think I'm worth it. Today, I've got joy in my hair, I've got hope on my wrist, and I've got my tranquil roller in my pocket. Hopefully that will help get me through this day and anybody else that might need it. So just a reminder for new customers, the sale goes on till the 31st, 100 PV or more, and you get an extra 15% off. Put something on loyalty and you unlock the 24% for the rest of the year. For, or, for an entire year. So have a good day and love the ones you're with. This woman really started out by saying, I'm on my way to Stacy's funeral. It's a really sad day. And she ended by saying, the Young Living sale is running through the 31st. Get 15% off. Have a great day. Here's my question. Why? Just, just why? <laughs> How did we get to this point? Why does this reel exist? Why did she think that that was appropriate? Why are we mentioning somebody's funeral and a young living sale in the same video? Within a 60 second clip, we go from grieving someone's loss to promoting your essential oil pyramid scheme. Don't you think that's a bit inappropriate? Usually this is the point where I try and break it down for you and I say something along the lines of like, here's why this person is posting this. Here's their motive. Here's the impact their post is attempting to have on the viewer. But in this case, I'm just at a loss. This is so unhinged and so disrespectful. We should never be using somebody's death as a segue into promoting a product for your own financial gain. I think her point here is to say, I'm having a hard day. I'm grieving. I'm using these three unliving oils to get me through the day. If you need these oils too, let me know. There's a sale going on. Maybe she's trying to make a product claim that hope, joy, and tranquil oils are effective at getting somebody through their grief? Is that true? I don't know. Is it supported by evidence? Probably not. But regardless of the strange product claims, I think the fact that this video even exists is what's the most shocking to me. I just can't get past it. Think of the thought process that this woman had to go through to get to the point of posting this publicly. First, she had to draw the connection between somebody's death and her young living pitch in her head. Then 
then she had to think, yeah, that's appropriate. That's logical. That's acceptable. Then she had to go through the act of actually filming it while driving, mind you. She is actively driving on the road right now. And then she had to watch it back and think, yep, that sounds good. I don't see anything wrong here. And then she had to click post so the whole world can see it. It's just unfathomable to me that people can have that thought process and think that it's okay. But I think that this reel serves as a great example that speaks to the fact that it is such common practice in these MLM businesses to connect everything in your life to a pitch. She's probably just gotten herself into this habit of doing that so regularly that she doesn't see anything wrong here. It is so normalized to spin every life event, every trauma, every victory, every thought and feeling you have into a way to pitch your MLM business opportunity or the products. Your kid's in the hospital, thank goodness you can work from anywhere. You paid off your debt, you gotta give all the credit to the MLM. Your friend's daughter died and you were driving to her funeral. Great time to pitch the Young Living sale, apparently. It's truly shocking and unsettling to see. This poor deceased woman is having her death and her funeral used as a point of promotion by somebody stuck in a pyramid scheme. How insulting. I can only hope that this woman will one day be able to remove herself from the MLM and look back at this in retrospect and recognize how wrong this behavior is because she clearly can't see it right now. It's hard to understand how these actions are inappropriate when you're in the thick of it, but this is a really sick example of how people will use anything going on in their life, even the death of a loved one to pitch their MLM. On a lighter note, because we really started out with a doozy, usually I work up to those more infuriating clips, but I really just hit you with it right from the beginning today. Sorry about that. Let's lighten it up a little bit. This is a TikTok of a Monate rep spraying different brands of dry shampoo into an open flame and showing that they're sparking the flame on the candle while the Monate dry shampoo doesn't. I can't play the audio for this one, so I'll just have it rolling over here on the screen, but this is not the first time we have seen this exact type of experiment on my channel. This is kind of a trend that Monate reps are continuing to do to somehow prove that their dry shampoo is the better alternative to those that you can find on normal store shelves from non-MLM companies. But this same type of video performed by a different Monate rep in the company was featured way back in MLM Top Fails 37. I posted that in January of 2022, over a year ago. And here we are still seeing Monate reps conducting this silly little experiment on social media to try and make the point that their dry shampoo is better than the more affordable, more accessible competitors. If they're still repurposing this experiment and spreading this misinformation a year later, I'm still gonna be here debunking it a year later and we'll get to that. But first and foremost, the thing about this video that's different from the other ones that I've seen before or the one that was featured in MLM Top Fails 37 is that the TikTok starts out by saying we're testing out the dry shampoos since all the recalls came out. And later the TikTok ends by saying, DM me to get your hands on a clean dry shampoo that won't light you on fire. <laughs> what she's referring to is that in October of 2022, pretty recently, the company Unilever issued a recall on a bunch of different dry shampoos because they contained the ingredient benzene. Benzene is a known human carcinogen, which means that it is known to cause cancer. This is a huge issue. Products with that ingredient should be recalled, absolutely. But this Monate rep with her TikTok is completely missing the point. It's like she caught wind in the news that some dry shampoos were being recalled. And it's like she took that little nugget of information and she applied it to this candle experiment to show you how Monate's dry shampoo, quote, won't light you on fire. But ma'am, that was, that was never the issue here. You see, <laughs> the Unilever dry shampoos weren't recalled because they lit people on fire. They were recalled because of a dangerous cancer causing ingredient. So I feel like we could just stop right there. Whatever point she's trying to make with this TikTok experiment is already invalid. The reason that these dry shampoos were recalled has nothing to do with how flammable they were. So why are you out here filming yourself spraying dry shampoo into a candle? <laughs> like, it seems like a bit of a reach to me. Like she's trying to draw this connection that doesn't exist. But aside from all of the dry shampoo recall stuff, the experiment is still ridiculous in itself and it can still be debunked. The bottom line is that it really doesn't matter if the dry shampoo you're using sparks an open flame, okay? And I'll explain why. This 
is not something that we need to be concerned about, but this is something that Monate reps love to fear monger. Think of it this way. The flammable nature of these products comes from the type of packaging that it's in, an aerosol can. Aerosol cans have that little nozzle that you press down on the top and it releases pressure and the product inside the can is shot out at a high rate of speed thanks to what's known as a propellant. A propellant is an ingredient, usually butane, propane, or isobutane that is added to the can to create that pressurized environment so that it propels the product out of the can when you release the pressure. But it's important to know that the propellant that's used, that's the thing that's flammable, but that is not an ingredient of the product. The only job of the propellant is to force the product out of the can and then it dissipates into the air. So with dry shampoo, for example, you hold it close to your scalp, you press down on the nozzle to release the pressure, the propellant shoots the product out of the can and onto your scalp, and then that propellant dissipates into the surrounding air, only leaving the product behind. Once the dry shampoo is on your scalp, it's not flammable anymore. Your hair itself is flammable even with no product in it, so I would still recommend that you stay away from an open flame, but using a dry shampoo with one of these flammable propellants is not going to increase your risk of catching your head on fire. So what this means is that unless you're standing directly next to an open flame, like there is a candle literally right here next to your head as you're spraying the dry shampoo on and there's propellant swirling around in the air next to that open flame, unless you're putting yourself in that position, which you're likely not, then you're not at risk. I would say that most people have enough common sense to know that you don't spray something from an aerosol can that's highly flammable in the presence of fire. But it makes for a pretty eye-catching TikTok, doesn't it? The average person scrolling mindlessly through TikTok is not going to stop to think about the mechanics of aerosol cans and how this is a pointless and debunked experiment. More likely, I feel like a person would stop and watch it and be like, wow, that's crazy. I guess Monate must be better and they're gonna keep scrolling. And to an extent, I kind of feel like MLM reps rely on this lack of critical thinking on the part of the viewer when they're making these posts on social media promoting the products and the business opportunity. They're kind of relying on the fact that the average viewer likely isn't going to stop their scroll to go do a deep dive on how this particular TikTok experiment can be debunked. I do it because I'm fascinated and this is my job, but most people, the average Average person scrolling TikTok would not do that. And that's how I believe the MLM reps get away with spreading misinformation on social media because they can say whatever they want to say, they can make whatever claim they want to make, and it's not very likely that someone's going to call them out on it until somebody sends the clip to me and then we spend several minutes debunking it, of course. But the moral of the story here is that just because spraying the Monate dry shampoo into a candle doesn't spark the flame further doesn't mean that it's inherently the best dry shampoo out there. That you could possibly ever buy. This experiment says nothing of the product's performance. We don't know based on this TikTok if the Monate dry shampoo actually performs better and works more effectively as compared to the cheaper, more accessible non-MLM alternatives. And the last thing I want to point out for this that I didn't address the first time we talked about this ridiculous experiment is that the first ingredient listed, as with all aerosols, is the propellant. The more common propellants, like I said, are propane, butane, and isobutane. In Monate's case, it is tetrafluoropropene. <laughs> Probably not saying that correctly, but apparently this is still a really flammable substance. So it's not like they're using a non-flammable propellant. So honestly, I'm still confused as to why the Monate dry shampoo didn't spark in the ways that all the other ones did. The other ones are using propane, butane, isobutane, which are all known flammable propellants, but Monate is also using a flammable propellant. So that is a piece of this that is confusing to me and that I don't really understand. So I kind of wanted to put it out there and ask, like, does anybody know why this product supposedly has a flammable propellant as the first ingredient, but still doesn't spark a flame? I don't know. I'm confused. Maybe someone out there knows the explanation for this, but regardless, remember this experiment still proves absolutely nothing. Yes, some dry shampoos 
SKUs have been recalled, but not because they were flammable. And even if the product you are using is flammable, as long as you're not spraying it directly into a flame, you're going to be fine. And along the same theme of ridiculous MLM Hun demonstrations, here's one from a Mary Kay rep. Again, I can't play the audio because of copyright, but I'll read through it. So this says, watch the power of Mary Kay's Skin Vigorate brush. First, I'll apply some foundation to the strawberry, then rinse with water, <laughs> okay? Next, I'll use Mary Kay's 4-in-1 cleanser to wash the strawberry and rinse again with water, okay? So she's like rubbing it in, rinsing it off. I still don't know the point of this experiment at this point, but we'll see. Then I'll wash the strawberry with cleanser and the Skin Vigorate brush. Okay, scrub a dub dub. I'll wash using the brush for about 30 seconds. I'm gonna let this run all the way through so that you can see. She cuts it and splices it right there and says that she'll rinse it with water and the brush. Ta-da, look at these results. Okay, what do we think, folks? How are we feeling about this? Because here's what I'm thinking. First and foremost, strawberries are not skin. Do I really need to say that? Apparently I do, because she's using a strawberry to replicate how the cleanser and the brush is going to act taking foundation off of human skin. That alone is enough for me to say that this demonstration is absurd and should be written off immediately. I don't know where they come up with these ideas. Very creative, but also not a legitimate demonstration. What are we doing? Why are we scrubbing foundation off of a strawberry and recording it. I don't know. But for the sake of entertainment, I think we should humor this for a second, and you know what that means. Welcome to another segment of Hun Science with Hannah, where we recreate ridiculous MLM demonstrations with cheaper, more accessible non-MLM products and debunk the ridiculousness. Yesterday, I put on real clothes and I left my house to go to the grocery store for one thing and one thing only, and that is strawberries. And I came home and I filmed myself doing this exact demonstration with the skincare products I already own. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll that footage and you'll see for yourself what happens. First, we start off by putting foundation on a strawberry. That is a sentence I never thought that I would say, but here we are. Rub it in there really good, rinse it under some water, show that it doesn't come off very well with water alone. Now we add some CeraVe cleanser. This is really affordable and it's great for sensitive skin. I've been using it for years now. Rinse that under some water, get as much off as we can. Then I use my Vanity Planet brush, also very affordable, also have been using it for years. Then I'm gonna go ahead and scrub off the foundation to the best of my ability. I'm not doing any cuts or splices to this footage. I just sped it way up so you can see exactly, like I didn't swap out the strawberry. I didn't do any creative editing here. No tomfoolery, I promise. But eventually, with enough scrubbing, I wanna say that took me like 30, 45 seconds-ish. And there we have it, a perfectly clean strawberry. <laughs> the seeds do look a little bit light because they're green, but all the foundation was scrubbed off the strawberry. So again, the biggest conclusion is that strawberries are not skin. This is not a sound experiment or demonstration. But even if we did take the demonstration seriously, we were able to replicate the same results with the strawberry using very affordable alternatives. The Mary Kay cleanser that she's promoting is $26 and the cleanser that I used is only $15 for three times as much product. The Mary Kay Skin Vigorate brush that she used is $75 and the one that I use, the Vanity Planet one, is only $30 on Amazon. So you could spend $101 on Mary Kay products, or you could spend $45 on non-MLM products that produce the exact same results in this demonstration. Whatever it is that she's trying to prove here, it didn't work. Cool, your Mary Kay products can get foundation off of a strawberry, but so do these other products that cost half the price and you don't have to support an MLM to get them, and they're gonna produce the same results. I think we get the point by now that these MLM experiments or demonstrations on social media, they're more so for shock value. Like what the heck, this girl's spraying aerosol products into an open flame, or this girl over here is scrubbing foundation off a strawberry. Like they're strange, they're weird to look at, and that's exactly what makes them eye-catching. And like I said previously,
previously, some people might look at that and think that that is a sound demonstration. <laughs> but I urge you to look at these things through a skeptical lens and apply some critical thinking to it because more often than not, it's completely bogus. It doesn't prove anything at all. You can get the same exact results with non-MLM products. The next top fail I have for you is actually just a photo that somebody sent me of these business cards they found. One of them is from Kangen Water and the other is from doTERRA. The Kangen one says that if you drink alkaline water, that equates to health. And if you drink acidic water, that equates to sickness. Obviously implying that the water filters they sell that cost thousands and thousands of dollars are going to produce the best water to give you the best health. But more importantly, I really wanna focus on this doTERRA one in particular, because in the corner here, it says doTERRA wild orange, and then it has a picture of the wild orange oil. And this says anti-cancer, antidepressant, antiseptic, antispasmodic, digestive, sedative, tonic, used for colds, colic, digestive and elimination problems, high cholesterol, mouth ulcers, water retention, wrinkles, muscle soreness, insomnia, menopause, and anxiety. Promote feelings of well-being and abundance. Apply topically to area of concern or reflex points. Add to drinking water or diffuse. This business card is really suggesting that this one oil has the ability to do everything from preventing wrinkles to treating or preventing cancer. Here's what the doTERRA website itself has to say about their wild orange oil. It says that you can spray it on surfaces for a cleansing boost. You can add it to your water for a burst of flavor and to promote overall health. You can diffuse it for an uplifting aroma, or you can put some drops in your hands and sniff them for an energizing boost. Please notice the huge contrast between what the company is claiming their product can do versus what this one random doTERRA rep is claiming that this product can do on a business card. This is exactly what I mean when I say that MLM reps make completely unregulated, unfounded health claims. You would never see the words anti anti-cancer or antidepressant on the doTERRA website. That's like an instant lawsuit. There is no evidence to support that claim. Therefore, the company will never make that claim. But remember that anyone can sign up to be a doTERRA rep, which means that anyone can make any claims they want and they likely won't get caught for it. It is against the company's policy to be making these kinds of health claims, but at the same time, how can they really enforce that, you know? This company has people out there printing their own business cards claiming that doTERRA wild orange oil has anti-cancer properties. And the company likely has no idea that this is happening. How would they? It's completely unregulated and people can get away with making up whatever lies they want to. It is impossible to keep tabs on every single rep for the company and every business card and every social media post and every private message or personal conversation that they've ever had about these products. They can't babysit everybody to make sure that every product claim they make is compliant. This is so, so, so dangerous. Because as you would know, if you watch the horror story videos on my channel, is that there are instances of people actually believing these absurd claims and therefore hindering their own health by delaying treatment that is proven to work by pursuing things like essential oils that are not proven to work. This is so not okay. This is incredibly problematic and it just just feel shocking to see all of these claims written out in words on a business card that is likely handed out to people or posted in local businesses or whatever. If I really wanted to, in a matter of five minutes, I could go online, I could create and order a set of business cards that says that doTERRA oil, if you sniff it, it will make you immortal. You will never die. You will live forever. I have the power to make up whatever absurd claim I want to about these products, and I have the power to go distribute that claim to strangers. And it's likely that I'm never gonna get caught for that. I'm never gonna be held accountable for that because how would the company know? It's just so crazy. And we can sit here and we can kind of joke about it, but truly this is dangerous. This can have some severely negative consequences if people truly believe that sniffing this oil, ingesting this oil, whatever, has the power to treat or cure any of these kinds of ailments listed on this business card. So here's just a reminder that if you see things like this, please please, please look at it through a lens of skepticism. And please know that these claims have not been proven anywhere. And the only reason that these product claims are being made is so that this particular rep can hopefully sell you on that product and take home a commission. The next thing I have to show you is a reel. It's a very short one and it 
just says, when someone tells me how much time they spend on social media and they don't make a dime doing it. And this kind of messaging really gets under my skin and irritates me, which is why I wanted to feature it here. People in MLM seem to have this mentality that every single aspect of your life should be monetized. And in turn, every single moment of every day should be spent doing something that makes you money. And I just wholeheartedly disagree with that sentiment. I think this has the potential to lead to severe dissatisfaction and burnout. Many people who work a traditional day job have zero desire to come home and spend their evenings working more to monetize their social media. Did you ever think about that? Like maybe people don't want to work during the hours that they're not at work. I'm here to tell you that you are allowed to enjoy scrolling on social media without getting paid for it. You're allowed to share a link to something you love without getting a commission. You're allowed to sit on your couch and binge watch your favorite TV show and not feel guilty about it. Basically, you are allowed to take time to do things in your life for no other reason than they just bring you happiness and enjoyment. I think this mentality of monetizing everything is really toxic. And when we start doing that, we start to lose focus of what's really important and what's really valuable and meaningful in our lives. I think that there is value in doing things solely for enjoyment. And I think that those things are necessary for a balanced life. It doesn't sound fun to be trying to work to make money 24 seven. Since when did we start glamorizing this hustle boss babe lifestyle where having downtime is seen as a weakness? It kind of seems like when you join an MLM, your brain is rewired to start thinking that way. That now every piece of your life needs to be posted for content and that everything you share has an underlying money motive to it and that everything you do in life needs to be directed towards the end goal of making money. I mean, look at the very first clip that we showed in this video of someone on their way to a funeral and still taking the opportunity to pitch their MLM. She can't even take the day off to grieve the death of a loved one. Like she's still taking that experience and turning it into a pitch. And I don't think MLM huns realize that not everybody wants to live like that and that this might not be a healthy mentality to have, but it somewhat is the reality of joining an MLM company. It's really difficult to make money in these schemes and therefore you find yourself working 10 times harder just to make half as much as you could at a traditional job. So no, you don't get downtime. You don't get a break. You are forced to spend every waking moment of every single day thinking about how you can monetize every aspect of your life. Personally, it sounds exhausting. It sounds unhealthy and unbalanced. And these kinds of reels that are essentially shaming those of us who choose to scroll social media for enjoyment, they always rub me the wrong way. And I don't think that this is a very effective strategy for them to be having. This like judgy attitude that if you're not monetizing your scroll and if you're not working 24 seven to become a boss babe, then you're less than and that you should be looked down upon or something. Personally, I love the fact that at the end of the day, I can kind of collapse into the couch and get lost in my phone for a little bit and tune out and also not feel guilty that I'm doing that. And I don't feel like these kinds of reels that are claiming that you should be monetizing every moment of every day are a flex. (laughs) It's not something I personally strive for. It's not something I feel like a lot of people strive for, but it gives us a peek into their mentality and the fact that when you join an MLM, you really don't get a break and you do have to look at everything through a money lens now. And the last thing for this video is a TikTok from somebody who is in the company It Works. Okay, so I have been literally like responding to as many applications as possible today, but I wanted to hop on here and just share like what it is that I do. So I am a brand ambassador for It Works. The company has been around for over 22 years. It's debt free. I have been doing this for the past eight years. I have always gotten paid on time, most of the times early. Um, And essentially what we do is we share products. So it's kind of like if you were to go into GNC and get like a recommendation on like your health and wellness supplements, but we're cutting out like the middleman and the storefront. So we market on social media. I talk to people, I help them just get healthier. Um, And then I just show people how to make money by doing the same exact thing that I do. Um, There is an investment to get started and it varies so based on like the country and like the kind of products that you want um so if you want more info click the link in my bio to apply 
okay, I like this TikTok for this video because it's not outwardly egregious or crazy, but there's several subtle but impactful things that she says that I want to point out. The first one is that she starts the TikTok by saying, I'm responding to as many applications as possible today. And then at the end, she says, if you want more info, click the link in my bio to apply. And it's this language of application and applying that is really misleading. What she's talking about is not an application. It's a form that she's created on her own and she's posted the link in her bio for people to go to and fill out and give their personal information. You're not submitting an application to the company itself. You're literally submitting a form to her so that she knows details about you and she can take that information and file it away. And so she knows how to contact you and how to pitch you the opportunity in the future. You are not applying to anything. There is no application process for MLMs. They will literally let anybody with a pulse sign up for these things. There's no vetting process here. And if you wanted to join It Works, you could just go to the It Works website and it'll take you like five minutes to sign up and you don't have to go through her quote unquote application. But I see MLM reps using this terminology to create a sense of legitimacy around the business opportunity, but really it's just a front for them to gain your personal information so they know how to contact you and pester you in the future. The second subtle but misleading thing she said is that she compared herself to somebody who works at GNC, which is a retail chain that sells supplements. And then she took it a step further to say that her company is better than companies like GNC because they quote, cut out the middleman and they don't have storefronts. And this middleman argument is so comical to me because people who sell MLM products are the middleman. The company didn't cut out the middleman, they just made you the middleman. People can't buy MLM products in a store. They can't walk into a GNC and buy them off the shelves. They have to buy them through you. Doesn't that make you literally the middleman? They have to go through you to get the products. And the last thing that she said that I wanna point out is that she says, quote, I show people how to make money by doing the exact same thing I do, which is an inherently flawed business design that people in MLMs don't seem to understand. If you are in a sales position, you want less competitors, not more. And if your goal really was to sell the product, then you wouldn't want to be teaching a whole bunch of other people how to go out there and sell the same exact product you sell. Because if you did that, then they would be in direct competition with you for your customers. So saying that part of her job is to teach others to do what she does pretty much indicates that it's a pyramid scheme. Does it not? Doesn't that indicate indicate that a huge goal of your company is to recruit people and to teach them how to recruit more people because you would never want to do that with salespeople. You would never want to do that if your goal was to sell a product. So doesn't that tell us that this whole thing is way more about recruiting than it is about selling? And if we take it one step further, we can ask ourselves, isn't that the entire point of this TikTok? To tell people what you do to get them to apply so that you can recruit them and teach them how to recruit others? It's videos like these that are really extra extra fascinating to me because there's a lot of hidden meaning behind what they will say. And that's the goal with these videos is to kind of peel back that curtain and to show you what they're saying, but then to explain to you what they actually mean. <laughs> because at face value, when you're scrolling on TikTok and you come across this, it just looks like a seemingly nice woman explaining what she does, that she sells a product and she has an application in her bio and that she wants to find other people so she can teach them how to do the same thing she does. But when you really peel back those layers and you think about what it is that she's actually saying, you realize that what she's actually describing is a money-making scheme that values recruitment more than selling a product. And that's all you need to know at the end of the day. Extremely fascinating. And with that, my friends, that's everything I have to show you for today's MLM Top Fails video. Huge thanks to everyone who sent me the clips and the photos for this video. I am always looking for more content, more submissions. So if you come across something on social media that you think would be a good fit for these videos, I would love to take a look at at it, you can send it my way using the instructions in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.